Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Chav Zayin, Daf 27 of Masech Yoma. Today's Daf, what can I tell you about today's Daf? Um, it's like a funny little Daf. Shtickle spaghetti, cause it, but I don't know. It's hard to tell. But basically, um, we discuss the Hefshef and Ituach, the removal of the hide as well as cutting up animals. We said at the end of the Mishnah yesterday, that it is Kshere Bazaar. It can be done by a non Kohen. So we will get into discussion as that, as well as we will discuss uh, putting the Shnig Ziri Eitzim, the two strips of wood on top of the um, pyre of the Mizbeach. That's really what we're going to talk about and like where we learn these things out, kind of. So let's just jump in. So, as I said a second ago, um, at the end of the mission, we said, let's take a look for ourselves. That removing the hides as well as cutting up the animals by both Korbanos Yachid and by Korbanos Tzibor, um, if it's done by a non kohen that is okay. Uh, that will not mess things up. Okay. So it says the Gemara, Okay. So, Let's just call it Hevshev Nituach, which is removing the hides and cutting up the animals. So Hevshev Nituach is Shavan Bazar. You're allowed to do that if you are a non Kohen, whether by Korbanus Yachid or by Korbanus Sibor. Ha Kohen, what? Omar Chizkia says Chizkia, Minai Hevshev Nituach Shashav Bazar. How do we know that Hevshev and Nituach are allowed to be done by a non Kohen? Shinemar is the positive says, Venasu bin Ahar and Ha Kohen, A Shalom is Beach. Well, it says that the children of Aharon will put fire on the Mizbeach. So putting fire on the Mizbeach needs to be done by a Kohen. However, Hefshib Nituach does not need to be done by a Kohen. One second. We need this Pasuk of Vinasun bin Aharon a Kohen Eishal Mizbeach that the Children of Aharon are going to put fire on the Mizbeach. We need it to teach us just that. That the children of Aharon need to put fire on the Mizbeach. Not to exclude Hevshev and Ituach. We need it to teach us that they have to put the fire on the Mizbeach. So it says of Shimi Bar Ashi that he found Abaye. That he was explaining to his son. Who's his son? Was that Bivi Bar Abaye? I don't know. Anyways... So Abai was teaching his son this halach that Chizkia says that minayin lehevshev and ituach sheshav and bizar. How do I know that hevshev and ituach is 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 allowed to be done by bizar? And he quoted this pasuk of v'nosu bnei har nakayin eishal mizbeach. And we had a kasha. We needed to teach it itself, right? That that you put fire, not necessarily to exclude hevshev and ituach. It says of Shimi Bar Ashi that he found that Abai was taka teaching his his son this this halacha. And he explained it to his son in the following way. That we have a b'risa that says v'shachat. That the pasuk says that you have to slaughter the animal. Shechita bizar k'shera. That, that slaughtering the animal can be done by a non-kohen. ayin basa. How do we know this? Says the b'risa. Well, michlal shenemar. Well, because the pasuk says v'ato v'necha itcha tishmu askuna aschem l'chod v'ayam izbeach. You have to add those words in from the go sabach. So because the Pasuk says that you and your children will guard your uh, uh, priesthood, l'chod v'ah for all of the things related to the Mizbech, so shumei ani afilu shechita. So I would think, so all things related to sacrifices on the altar, that includes the slaughtering of the sacrifices. That, ha- that I would think that that would have to be done by a priest. Tam lom v'shachad has been abak or lifnei Hashem, well, therefore, the Pazit says that he, doesn't say who, but he will slaughter the ox or the cow before God. And then it says that the children of Aharon, who are priests, will bring the blood to the Mizbeach. So we only see the introduction of the Kohanim from the time that it says that they're going to bring the blood to the Mizbeach. So only the Kabbalah's Hadam, receiving the blood and onwards, must be done by a Kohen. However, 
v'samach yodu v'shochat, that when it says that he's going to lean on the animal and slaughter the animal, limer al ashkita shikshere bizar, so slaughtering is allowed to be done by a non kohen. Okay, fine, very good. So the slaughtering can be done by a non kohen, says the Brisa. The Kabbalah Saddam and onwards, receiving the blood and onwards must be done by a kohen. Michde says Abaye now to explain this Brisa and to explain Chizkia, who says that Hefshev and Ituach is Ksher Bazar. Mi Kabbalah Ve'elach Mitzvah so we just established that from the Kabbalah Saddam, from receiving the blood of the animal, from the neck of the animal and onwards, must be, must be done by a Kayin. Well, v'nosnu b'nei aharin ha-Kayin eish ala mizbeach. So when the pos, I added those words based on the Gosa Bach. That's, that, that, that's what this Davs is Shtuko Spaghetti. There's a lot. You got to add. You got to this. You got to that. So it's like uh, the Yushalmi of Shkala Mishtiko, but not, not quite as... Dire. So once we have already established as a baseline that from Kabbalah Saddam and onwards the service must be done by the Kohanim, well, if that's the case, then why do I need the Pasuk to teach me that they're going to put the fire on the Mizbeach? I mean, if I think about it, you slaughter the animal, you receive the blood, you take the blood to Mizbeach, you throw it on the Mizbeach, next you start dealing with the animal. Right, and, you, and part of what you're going to do then is you're going to make sure that there's fire in the mizbeach, and you're going to put the animal on the mizbeach. So of course that would have to be done by the kohanim. So why do I need a pasuk now to teach me that it has to be done by the kohanim? It's after kabbalah Saddam. Of course it has to be done by the kohanim. So lamali, how come I have this pasuk? Rather, it must be the hevshet vini tuach. So it must be. You know why? We have this seemingly unnecessary pasuk because what it's saying is that the children of Aharon put the fire on the Mizbeach but they do not have to be the ones to do the Hevshev Venituach. Meaning, the, right, so this, we said that slaughtering the animal could be done by a non coin Now, from receiving the blood and taking the blood to the Mizbeach and throwing the blood on the Mizbeach, that all has to be done by a coin. And then we said additionally, putting the fire has to be done by a kayin. Okay, isn't that obvious? Yes, that alone is obvious. However, we're saying that has to be done by a kayin to the exclusion of other things that are post shrita, such as removing the hide and cutting it up into pieces. That can be done by a non kayin. Okay, very, very beautiful stuff. Vakati itzdrich, says the Gemara, I'm not satisfied. I actually need the Pasuk to teach me that the children of Aharon have to put, be the ones to put the fire in the Mizbeach, that Azar is unable to put the fire on the Mizbeach. How come? Because Sagadai Techamina, I may have had the thought to say, well, since lighting the fire on the Mizbeach is not a step of the service that will prevent atonement, meaning, the Kabbalah, right, 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 the Zrika Saddam is sort of the main part. That, that, that's the part where the Kapara is dependent on. And if something gets messed up, and there's no Zrika Saddam, so there's no Kapara. Lighting the fire is not a key part if it, you know, if, uh, I guess the fire would have to, I guess even if, yeah, I think even if the animal somehow doesn't end up getting burnt, you, right, as long as there's Zrika Saddam, I think you get the Kapara. And therefore, because the, the lighting of the, of the, of the Mizbech is not Ma'akib Kapara. So I may have thought to say that maybe that isn't so important. Maybe it does not have to be done by a coin. And maybe if a non coin lit the fire on the Mizbech, maybe it would be okay. I came to Lava Voda the Makva Kapara. Since lighting the fire in the Mizbech is not a part of the service that would prevent getting your atonement, Lotibai Kuna, maybe it doesn't need to be done by a coin. And that's why we have this pasuk of Nosu Bnei Aharon Akayin Esayishal Mizbeach to teach us that actually it does have to be done by Kohanim. Well, if that's the case, then where are we excluding Hefshev and Ituach from? Shalom Eocha. So rather we're excluding it from here. V'archu Bnei Aharon Akayin Akayin Esayishal Mizbeach Akayin Esayishal Mizbeach Akayin Esayishal Mizbeach Well, we have another pasuk that says 
that the children of Aharon, the Kohanim, will organize Nisachim. Nisachim is not libations here, this is with a tuft. It's the pieces of the animal. Esarosh v'sapader, the head and the fats. So why do we need that pasuk? Michdei, let's see. Mi Kabbalah ve'elach mitzvah skuhuna. We already established that from Kabbalah Sadam, receiving the blood from the neck of the animal and onwards must be done by Kwanim. And if that's the case, so why do I need the Pasuk to teach me that they're going to organize the parts of the animal on the Mizbeach? That's obviously after the Shechita and the Kabbalah and all that kind of stuff. So obviously that has to be done by Kwanim. It's after Kabbalah Sadam. So the Muta Evshev and Ituach, rather, it must be that, yeah, organizing the parts of the animal has to be done by Kwanim, but Hefshev and Ituach does not have to be done by the Kwanim. Frek the Gemara. But why don't we say that what's being excluded from this Pasuk is not that Hefshev and Ituach can be done by Azar, but rather that putting the two strips of wood, the Shnei Ziri Eitzim, can be done by Azar. That it's saying that, that the children of Aharon will organize the pieces of the animal on the Mizbeach to the exclusion of the Shnei Ziri Eitzim. Maybe that can be done by a non kohen So the Gemara says, no. The Gemara says, well, if we have the choice, that is this Pasuk, where it says that the children of Aharon have to organize the parts of the animal on the Mizbeach, if we had to choose, is that to the exclusion of Hefshev and Ituach, or is it to the exclusion of the Shnei Gzir Eitzim, I'd rather learn out Hefshev and Ituach, which is animal sacrifice related, as opposed to two strips of wood, which is more per, 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 peripherally connected, putting the wood on the Mizbeach, but not exactly the animal sacrifice directly related. Ad Rabbisidu de Kavasim Emayit. To which the Gemara says, well, I can make the argument that actually the Shnei Gziri Eitzim is more similar to the pieces of the animal than the Efshin Yituach because with the pieces of the animal, you're organizing them on the Mizbeach. And with the Shnei Gziri Eitzim, you're organizing them on the Mizbeach. As opposed to Hefshev and Ituach, which is not about organizing things on the Mizbeach. So maybe actually, I would argue that when it says that the Bnei Ahar and Akayanim organize the pieces of the animal on the Mizbeach, maybe it's to the exclusion of organizing the Shnei Gziri Esim, that maybe that's allowed to be done by a non coin Says the Gemara, Lo Salkadaitech, no, that's not a possibility. Putting the Shnei Gziri Esim on the Mizbeach cannot be done by a czar. How come? Well, Mar, we said, that the Kohen will put everything on the Mizbeach. This means that a Kohen needs to bring all the pieces of the animal to the ramp of the Mizbeach. From which we learn out that bringing the pieces of the animal to the ramp of the Mizbeach needs to be done by Kohanim. However, Bringing the wood to the Mizbeach does not have to be done by Kwanim, but Hasidur Shnei Gziri Eitzim Bayakuna. But organizing the two pieces of wood onto the Mizbeach requires Kwanim. So we say bringing the parts of the animal to the Mizbeach requires Kwanim. Bringing wood to the Mizbeach does not require Kwanim. Organizing the Shnei Gziri Eitzim does require Kwanim. So we just said that organizing the Shnei Gziri Eitzim does require Kwanim. So what is being excluded from the Pasuk of It must be to the exclusion of Hefshet B'ni Tuach that that can be done by a non coin by a czar. Okay? Sounds good to me. So now this little next piece of Gemara is the Agos Abach has like a very different Girsa it's hard to tie back in. The gear set that we have here is not way better, but it's slightly easier to tie in. I'm going to just go for the, 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 the text that we have in front of us. 
Okay, it's going to be kind of going back on itself a little bit. Uh, it's not too hard. It just is weird. Okay, so we're just going to go weiter through it. So then, to reiterate, how come we have this pasuk of ve'archu b'nei hayin akanim b'sin esach mesorosh v'sapoder? So the mute hevshiv b'nituach. It's to the exclusion of hevshiv b'nituach that it is kosher bizarre. Fine. Ve'emachinami legufe. Let's say that this pasuk also needs to teach me that the b'nei hayin akanim have to organize the 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 pieces of the animal in mizbeach. Ela ve'hiktir akoyin es akol l'may also. So when it says that the coin has to burn everything, why do we have that? Now the Pasuk doesn't actually ever say that technically, but it does say Vihikriv and then Vihiktir, whatever. Okay, that'll be to exclude Hevshiv to say that that's allowed to be done by Azar. Okay, so when it says that the coin will uh, bring everything to the Mizbeach, so that means that a kohen needs to bring the parts of the animal to the ramp of the mizbeach. Halacha sevarim la kevesh udubai yekuna. Halacha seetzim lo bai yekuna. As we said, that bringing the pieces, the pieces of the animal to the mizbeach requires kohanim. However, bringing wood to the mizbeach does not require kohanim. We've said all this. Hasidir shnei gziri eitzim bai yekuna, and organizing the two. Strips of wood on top of the mizbeach does require kohanim v'nosnu legufe. Okay, as we said earlier, that when it says v'nosnu b'nei aharon akoyin eishal mizbeach, that the children of aharon have to put fire in the mizbeach. We said that we need that because I may have thought that since it doesn't, it's not ma'akev kapara. Maybe you don't need the kohanim. So kamash milan the pasuk that you do need the kohanim. Okay, now this is already a shtickle new, but not particularly hard, other than the fact that it. It might be a shtickle random. V'archu is shnayim. When it says v'archu in the pasuk, it's two. B'nei Aharin, the children of Aharon is also a minimum of two. Hakohanim, which is plural, is also a minimum of two. Shnayim. L'manu l'tala shetown shisha. That teaches that a sheep, i.e. like the Tomit Shoshacha, the Tomit Shobin Arvaim, requires six kohanim. Amar v'amnuna kashalei l'rebbe lazar hayb v'en abakar ksiv. Says of v'amnuna, that rebbe lazar had a kasha, but why all of a sudden are we talking about a sheep? This pasuk, all these pasuk that we're talking about, the archu, the ikri, all this stuff, is by cows, not by sheep. So why all of a sudden, where does the sheep come from? Uven abakar esen v'arba, and we had said in our mishnah that a cow requires twenty-four kwanim, and here all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we're starting to talk about a sheep and six kwanim. Like what, what is this? So by vinichale. So Rabbi Loza asked the kasha, he also answered the kasha, Ala eitzim asher ala eish, asher ala mizbeach, that in that same pasuk, in the same context where it's talking about cows, it also says, on the fire, on the wood and the fire, on the mizbeach. Ezo davar shenemar bo eitzim ve'eishu mizbeach. What's the thing that it says about it, that it needs, that you have to organize wood and then put fire and put it on the mizbeach. Haviyom is atole, that must be talking about the Talmud Shal Shachar. And as Rashi points out, that by the Talmud Shal Shachar, you had to specifically organize the wood. You had to take wood and you had to set it up and light it. All the other korbanos that come afterwards, you could work with whatever wood was was there. The Talmud Shoshachar, you have to specifically organize the wood and set up the fire and set up the Mizbeach properly. And therefore, when it says Va'archu, Eitzim, etc., that's not something that's specific for the, the korban of the cow. Rather, it must be referring to the Korban Atomid, which is a sheep, and that is where the sheep is coming from, to say that you need six quantum for the sheep. Okay, sounds very, very beautiful. So, Lemaise, what did we learn from all of that? We learned out that Hevshev and Ituach is Sher Bazar. How did we learn it out? Arguably unclear. Let, 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 I mean, we, we learned it out, I think, in, in the last sort of thing that we, that was like clear, I think we learned it out from, um, to the exclusion of Hevshev and Ituach, but then we had that funny Girsa with Dagosa Bach that somebody wanted to argue that maybe you can learn it out from there, maybe you can learn it out from Vihiktir Akol, but it doesn't actually say it in the Pasuk. Alright, I'll call upon him Hevshev and Ituach, Hevshev and Ituach is Kashir Bazaar. Amr Ba'asi, Amr Byochanan, Zar Shasidar Samarocha Chayo, says Ba'asi, the name of Byochanan, and that a non coin who organizes the wood on top of the Altar on top of the mizbeach is chayev misa bidei shemaim keitzad uose. So what should he do? Pork of a chosav esodra. So you have a non coin who 
organized wood on top of the Mizbeach. Big problem. What should he do? So he should dismantle the wood that he organized and then rebuild it. Mayahanile. What does that accomplish? What is dismantling and rebuilding the structure that he wasn't allowed to build in the first place? How does that fix anything? No, what it means is that if you have a non-coin, a czar, who organizes the wood onto the, on top of the Mizbeach, that's a problem. What he should do is he should dismantle it. And then a coin will build it, and, and that's correct. Now, dismantling it won't fix the czar's problems, but um, the wood does nonetheless need to be dismantled and rebuilt by a coin. Maskifler, Rebzer, has a kash of chiesh, avoda shikshir balayla, uvsula bazar. Do we have such a, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? A, um, oh gosh, uh, 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 really? How can I forget this word? Precedent. Do we have a precedent for something that you're allowed to do at night and it's psula, bizarre, and it can't be done by a non coin Meaning, organizing the wood on top of the Mizbech is allowed to be done at night. And therefore, if it's allowed to be done at night, we don't have a precedent for something else that's allowed to be done at night and yet is possible bizarre. So therefore, I would assume that if that since organizing the wood on the Mizbech is allowed to be done at night, so then it should also be allowed to be done by a czar. So again, Maskefler, Rebzer, Rebzer, Asakashev, Chiyeshcha, Avodash, Ekshir, Do we ever have a precedent for a service in the temple that is allowed to be done at night and yet, Ufsula Bazar, it's possible for a czar to do Velo? What do you mean? We, what, what do you mean we don't have a precedent? What about burning of the fast and the limbs, which could be done all night and yet it must be done by a Kayan, it can't be done by a czar? So if Avodah di Imamai, as we've seen this argument in the past, Hector Evarim Ufdarim is not a nighttime at Voda. It's the conclusion, it's the completion of the handling of the korbanists that were slaughtered during the previous day and you didn't get a chance to burn them yet that day so you could burn them all night. But it's not, strictly speaking, a nighttime of Voda. Bari Chuma Sadeshen. What about Chuma Sadeshen? We said you could do it already at Chatzos or at the end of the first Ashmura or arguably even earlier. To which Sigmar says, yeah, that too, that's not really a nighttime of Oda, it's the first of Oda of the day. That if you have a fellow who did Kiddush Adayim V'Raglayim, I assume it's also V'Raglayim, for Chuma Sadeshen, then the next day he doesn't have to do Kiddush Adayim because he already did Kiddush Adayim at the beginning of the Avodah. So, we see that Shuma Sadeshin is really the beginning of the daytime avoda. So again, Shuma Sadeshin and Hector Ivar Muftar must be done by a coin, but it's, it's, it's not necessarily considered a nighttime avoda. They're daytime avodas. Ve'ela Kasha, no, so then what about Rebzeris Kasha? Seemingly, we cannot find a precedent for something, uh, an avoda, a service in the temple that is permitted to be done at night, and yet, it's possible bizarre. Elikitmar Ochietmar. Rather, this is how you have to say what Rabbi Yochanan says, which is, mm-hmm. Says, Rabbi Yochanan, that if you have a czar who organized the two strips of wood on top of the pyre of the Mizbeach, he's going to be chayv, as we saw earlier today. That the bringing of the wood to the Mizbeach is k'sher bazar, but the organizing of the shnei gziri it must be done by a kohen. So that's what Rabbi Yochanan is saying. That a czar who is Masada the Shnigziri hates him, so then, so then he's Takachayev. Hol Vavod Asyomi, since it's, that is actually, it must be done during the day. Maskev lo Rava, Rava Asakasha, Lemiata to buy pious. Well, if the Sidr Shnigziri hates him, must be done during the day, and must be done by a Kayan, and if it's done by a czar, you chayev Misa. Well then, shouldn't you have to? Shouldn't there need to be a lottery for it? It's not zok the gemara, or frek the gemara, whatever it is. Ishtam say, Rava somehow 
forgot about this brisa that we know, which is we had said that whichever Kohen merited to win the lottery for the Chuma Sadeshin, he also merited for organizing the wood on the Mizbeach, as well as putting the Shnei Ziri Eitzim there. So there actually is a lottery for the Shnei Ziri Eitzim. Remember the Avodas Yom Bar Yapayas, Avodas Laila Lo Bar Yapayas? In fact, the Gemara, is that to say that specifically daytime services require a lottery, but nighttime services do not require a lottery? So if I appear question mark, but what about burning of the fast in the limbs? That that's a nighttime avoda, and yet it requires a lottery. So if avoda diyamamahi, no, that's not a nighttime avoda. As we said a few minutes ago, it's a daytime avoda. It's the conclusion of or the completion of the service of the animals that were slaughtered the previous day. What about chuma sadeshen? You need a lottery for that, and that's done at night. So we said earlier, well, chuma sadeshen is really considered a daytime avoda. The Gemara gives a different answer over here, which is Mishum Maisa Well, we do have a, a lottery by the Chuma Sedeshin because of that unfortunate story where people got hurt, people even got killed. So do we say that in order that for, for, for services to require a lottery, there would have to be a daytime avoda as well as if a non coin does that avoda, it'd be chayv misa. Very shchita. What about shchita? Shchita is something that's kshere bizarre, yet it requires a lottery. Shiny shchita the tchilas avoda. The reason why shchita requires a lottery is because it's the first avoda that you're going to do in the base of mikdash, but not necessarily because it's something that if a czar does it, you'd be chayv misa. Okay. Um, Marzutra says, Marzutra be tamer of Ashi. Some say it's takar of Ashi. For Anan Tanan, but one second. I'm sorry, for Anan Lo Tanan, don't we have the following Mishnah? Meaning, if we want to say that the Shnei Ziri Eitzim taka has to be done during the day, but we have a Mishnah that says, on the father, on tomorrow's daf, on Muloy Mamemune, that the Sgan said to them, says to them in the morning, to Ru'u Migiaz Manashchita. Go and see if it's time yet to slaughter the Korban Pesach, uh, the, the Korban Tamid. But it doesn't say anything about go see if it's time yet for us to organize the Shnei Zir Eitzim on the Mizbeach. Doesn't it, that imply that it can be taka done during the night? So the Gemara says, well, the Mishnah is specifically referring to the, to see if it's time to slaughter the Korban Tamid Shal Shachar. Because if you slaughter the Korban Tamit Shachar, as we're talking, going to learn in the Mishnah tomorrow, if you slaughter it when it's too early, when it's still nighttime, you're going to have to throw it in the garbage. Very, very, very chaval. Slaughter an animal and throw it in the garbage. So therefore, we have to make sure that it's already daytime before we do the Shechitas Korban Tamit. If you do the Shnei Gzir Eitzim and it turns out that it was not yet daytime, it was still nighttime, okay, so reorganize them. Seder, not such a big deal. So that's why, so it's not, so when we say that the Mamune the Sagan Akoanim said to said, go and see if it's light out so that we could uh, um, slaughter the Tomit Shoshachar. It's not to say that specifically the Tomit Shoshachar has to be done during the day, but the Shnei Gzira Eitzim can be done at night. No, Shnei Gzira Eitzim also needs to be done during the day, but the reason why we don't you know, uh, uh, um, uh, single it out or specify it in the Mishnah is because even if you end up doing it in the night, it's not the end of the world because you could just redo it. As opposed to Tomit Shal Shachar, you're going to have to throw it in the garbage, which is very chaval. Chavit, that was Dav Chavzayin. It was like a funny Dav, like learning things out. What are the things that we learned out? The first thing that we learned out is that Hefshit Vinituach, removing the hides and cutting up the animal, uh, is permitted to be done by a non Kohen. I, I, in my mind, that was learned out from the Pasuk of Va'archu Bin Ayan, Akonimus, and Asachim Asosh, Vesapoder. And then we had the teaching ultimately of Rab, Rab Yochanan, which is that um, organizing the two strips of wood, the Shnei Ziri Eitzim, must be done by a Kohen. Uh, and if it's done by a non-Kohen, it's going to be Chayav Misa. Well, uh, that was the Chav Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.